What's up guys, Mike Thurston here and I'm back in 2017. Happy New Year to everyone. Today, I'm gonna to take you through an arm workout. So on the previous workouts, which I uploaded to YouTube for the arm routines, there was an accumulation workout and there was a superset workout. So in these workouts, the weight lifted is a little bit lower, the rest period shorter, but the overall work done is much more, okay? So it was either supersets or doing tricets or you know doing biceps, triceps, and things like that. This one's very different. It's literally just one exercise. There's no supersets. I would call it more of an intensification workout whereby the overall volume is a little bit less. You're still trying to lift pretty goddamn heavy, um, but the rest period is much longer. Again, it's a little bit different. I don't actually normally do this. I'd usually go from a bicep to a tricep to a bicep to a tricep. The way I was in this routine is we get triceps out of the way uh, for about 35, 40 minutes of the session, and then move on to biceps. So by the end of the first half of the session, triceps are well and truly fried, then we move on to the biceps until biceps are fried by the end of the session. So, first exercise, which we started on, was the line overhead dumbbell skull crush. Now, the reason why I've used the dumbbell, because there's no specific advantage overdoing, uh, you know, a neutral grip dumbbell compared to the EZ bar, where your wrists are flat. I found that a lot of you know clients I've trained in the past, they find this kind of movement a little bit more uncomfortable sometimes. Uh, so in that case, if you have any wrist or elbow issues, I'll just get them to do a neutral grip with the dumbbells. What I've also done as well, um, when I do these, I like to maximize the range of motion. So I would get myself onto the bench. I get myself right to the edge of the bench. So that allows me to bring the dumbbells right down behind my head. Okay, if you position yourself in the middle of the bench, more often than not, when you bring the dumbbells down, they bang into the bench. And you don't allow yourself to fully lengthen the tricep, which is what I'm trying to do when I do this. Now, when doing this exercise, it's, again, it's very important. You need to be able to keep the elbow fixed at all times. Don't allow yourself to be moving your elbows throughout the movement, okay? And try to keep your elbows pretty narrow when you do the movement. If you try to do a tricep extension like that, you're probably gonna mess your elbows up a little bit and you make the exercise easy, easier for yourself. So try and keep those elbows in so you're doing this kind of a thing. When you're in the gym, you wanna make sure that you're keeping your concentration at the task at hand. Don't get distracted, either by females walking around the gym with their ass in your face or with partners and training partners just pulling stupid faces and trying to distract you, okay? You really need to focus on the task at hand and pay attention to what it is that your goal is and what the tempo is, the rep ranges that you're trying to do, along with contracting and working the muscles which you're trying to target in the first place. So the next exercise we went on to was the standing cable press down. One thing that I do when I perform this exercise is to slightly lean my torso forward as I press down. It allows me to get a full range of motion and a better contraction of the bottom. Because usually, if you stand upright and the cable attachment is here and you press down, you can only really press to this position and I have the potential to lock out all the way at the bottom. So what I do is I'll push my hips back slightly, lean forward, push my chest out. So I'm holding the handle like this. As I press down, I'm able to fully squeeze and lock out the top. And now I bring the, the attachment back up to the top. So I'm stretching the tricep and then again, press down and squeeze as much as possible. One thing you want to bear in mind when you do this is to keep your torso as fixed as possible whilst pushing your chest down, keeping your shoulders back because as you start to fatigue, as the triceps start to tire, you will see and notice that your shoulders creep forward and you end up trying to press that movement down with your shoulders and your chest, which is something you don't want to do. Okay, it's not the end of the world if it starts to happen at the end of you know, your set, but you're probably lifting a little bit too heavy if that is the case. The focus is the triceps, so bear that in mind. Next exercise we went on to was the overhead cable rope extension. Uh, this one, again, when doing it, you wanna make sure the elbow's tucked in as much as possible. If you flare your elbows, make it easy for yourself. And again, when holding the rope attachment, don't press them together. If you press them together, again, it makes the exercise a little bit easier. And when I do it, I even feel it on my chest a little bit. What I would say is, you know, if you are on the second to last set or the final set, if you're going to all out failure, it's acceptable once you've failed with the ropes being apart, if you bring the ropes together and just rep out, you know, five, 10 extra reps, that's, you know, I would allow that to happen. But, you know, when I did it, I think we did it on the last set, I do feel it 
massively, you know, in all other parts of my body instead of just my triceps when I'm pushing my hands together and trying to you know, do that overhead extension movement. Next exercise we went on to was dips. Um, not your traditional body weight dip, but we did a bench dip where your feet are elevated. Now, I quite like doing these. For some reason, I get such a crazy pump on my triceps when I do this, so I will include these in my workouts every now and then. Uh, I do find if I'm doing it with just my body weight uh, and it's you know near the end of the workout, I'll just try and do higher reps. So in this uh, routine, we do 15 reps, I think. So just really pumping it out. Sometimes you can, if you, know, you really want to, you can add additional resistance by placing plates on your thighs when you're doing this but you know when i've done it in the past i need like 20 40 maybe even 60 kilogram plates on my thighs and it's just a bit of a ball ache taking them on and off which is something you definitely can't really do by yourself so you know do that if you want to but if i'm doing weighted dips or doing a weighted pressing movement such as that i'd probably go for the close grip bench press and the weighted dips instead of doing you know weighted body weight dips it's important to note with the overall anatomy of the triceps, there are three heads. You've got the medial head, the long head, and the lateral head. So it's important to do exercises which is gonna target all areas of them. You wanna have a thick 3D looking tricep. If you do too much of the same movement, then you're gonna end up with areas which are overdeveloped and areas which are underdeveloped. So my advice to you would be to do movements or include these exercises into your routine whereby you're doing movements where the elbow is above the head and you're extending in this kind of a motion. You can do other exercises whereby you're kind of pressing. So this would include things such as dips or a close grip press. And then you wanna be doing things which, you know, your elbows are then down and you're doing an extension such as this and squeezing the triceps. So then we move on to biceps. Now with the biceps, we're gonna start off with heavy flat barbell curls. The advantages of doing this exercise, um, I feel as though when you, the barbell is flat, you can get a better contraction and squeeze at the top of the movement because your hands are in a more supinated position. However, I've noticed that quite a lot of people do feel discomfort when doing that movement just purely because of the wrist positioning. So from time to time, I would advise that you use an EZ bar instead because it's more natural. So rotate whether you're doing the flat or EZ bar. And if you are feeling discomfort by doing a flat barbell curl, maybe it's better just doing dumbbells or something else. Okay, there's no point doing something which is gonna cause you more discomfort because otherwise you injure yourself. I find this is one of the exercises where most people will cheat. They kind of just swing the weight up and they don't really place attention on the biceps as much as they should. It's like a full body movement sometimes. Um, and even I'm guilty of it. Like when I watch back videos, I'm like, mm, maybe my form isn't as good as it could be. But the overall focus of this is just to lift kind of as heavy as possible. So I'm not too fussed about whether the last few reps are as not necessarily as clean as they could be, if you know what I mean. Um, the focus, I would say, once you bring that weight up, really try to squeeze the contraction at the top. Too many people will try and swing it up and then they temporarily rest at the top and then just bring it back down again. So there's very little squeezing or contraction going on in the biceps. So even if there is a little bit of momentum created, at least try and squeeze and maintain this kind of a position at the top. Don't allow yourself to be like this where you just rest in the bar at the top position, yeah? Next, we went on to dumbbell hammer curls. So we're alternating. And I'm slightly doing this across the body. Sometimes when I do a hammer curl, I'm doing it like this. And I'm just changing up this session where I just bring it across the body slightly. Is it gonna make a massive difference? Probably not. It's just changing the angles and forces and maybe recruiting different muscle fibers than before. So when doing this, again, squeeze contraction at the top and I would try to lock out at the bottom. Now in previous videos when I've told people to lock out at the bottom of the movement when doing a curl, people are like, oh, you know, you might damage yourself, you might injure yourself, I don't think that's very safe. Well, it is safe if you are doing this properly. Whenever I lower the weight and I perform the eccentric part of the movement, it's always under control. So when I come to the very bottom and I lock out, it's, it's not gonna cause me any damage, it's not dangerous. But if you're just letting the weight come down, flop down, and you know, you're creating a lot of momentum, and you're probably forcing your elbow to go in the direction it doesn't want to, 
then yes, you are going to potentially cause damage to yourself. So always have control, okay, in the eccentric phase of any movement, particularly if you come into locking out at the bottom. Finally, we went on to cable curls. So cable attachment at the very bottom using a uh, sort of an EZ uh, attachment. So my hands were in this kind of a position. So it's not quite like the barbell curl, which I did before. They were slightly like this. I don't know what the technical term is for that, but like this. Um, and yeah, again, same things apply, squeezing at the top. So guys, hope you enjoyed that. That was the arm workout. Be sure to subscribe and check for more videos because I'm going to be on the upload hype since it's 2017. So thanks for watching and see you soon.